Did you have a home? Did you live in the tent? Did you have a fridge? All these questions I got from the people who heard about my country for the first time. But the answer was a big smile. Because I came from Syria, from Aleppo city, the commercial capital of Syria, the city of trading, industry, the music, and the food. Do you know the name of this fruit? It's pomegranate, or granat apple in Dutch. Without pomegranate, we cannot go on our kitchen. Today, we are going to prepare a meal together with my story. My name is Zena Aboud. I had a very nice life in Syria. I was a sales manager, mother of three kids, my family and my friends around me. 2011, the war came to destroy all that nice life. During that time, I was helping the people in the, other, in the other side of the city, giving the kids milk and the people who need medicine. I gave them the medicine. But in 2013, unfortunately, the war started to be closer to my home. And I have to move to Syria. I fled from Syria to Turkey with my kids to keep their life safe. I lived there two years, working very hard. But for a reason, my kids were taken away from me to Europe. There is no way to follow them. The only way was the rubber boat. And I had to try two times this rubber boat to get Greece. Because the first time, the engine broke. And I was in the sea, in the middle of the waves, praying. Maybe someone can help me save my life. The only thing I was thinking about that my kids will be without mom. And my mom, she will lose both of her, of her daughters because my sister was with me also. But the strength of belief was bigger, and I survived. I continue my way to Netherlands through Greece, Macedonia, Serbia, and Croatia. But, but the situation in Croatia was not better because they arrested me. I was in the jail three days without food, without water, without any connection with anybody. When I had my freedom, I went to the border between Croatia and Slovenia. 
And I try my best to go through the gate, but there is no way. I had a very sad conversation with the Slovenian policeman. I asked him to go through the gate because I want to follow my kids. But he said, you are welcome in, in, in our home, in our land, but you have to put your fingerprints there. He didn't understand that my goal, that I want to follow my kids, not to be in his land. That moment, really, I lost the hope. After three days in the jail, and after this conversation, four o'clock morning in the wood, I was crying. It was the first time I was crying in this way. I was crying loudly. But there is a miracle happened. There is none from the church came to me. And she was talking to me. I thought that I got crazy or I am dreaming. But it was, it was really true. She asked me to go to the church to stay there. I stayed there five days. I slept the first 24 hours to get up and to see outside a lot of tents. And a lot of people, they were Syrian. All that people, they fled also from Syria to keep their life safe. I asked the nun, can I help you? Maybe I can give the kids outside the milk because everything in my mind, that's my son, Karim. He loves the, the milk. Maybe someone give him a glass of milk. For five days, I was helping her. The fifth day, she sent me by ambulance to Slovenia, finally. That time, I remembered what our Prophet Muhammad said, Ar-Rahimun, yarhamuhumullah, irhamu man fil ard, yarhamukum man fil sama. It means, if you give help, to someone that God will send help for you when you need it. And I continue my way to Netherlands. 26 of September 2015 at the central station of Amsterdam. It was the first impression about the Dutch people when I met Dutch policemen and he offered for me food and water, and he sent me to the Azetse, the place where the newcomers live. Hugging my kids made me feel alive again. I stayed there for a few months, doing some volunteering work with the organization who helps the refugees and the homeless, cooking in the kitchen. I was cooking because I found that the kitchen is my kingdom. The cooking is my passion. Until I get the opportunity to get my permit to stay here in Netherlands. With these wonderful people, my life got easier. 
because one of them, she is my Dutch mom. Hester, I lived in her home seven months. She took good care of me. The others helped me with my business, with my life, and the kids. When I got my permit to stay here, me and my friend Siba decide to register my work as an official work, Zina's Kitchen Catering Company, official in Netherlands, to be the first lady from Syria, from the newcomers, has her own business. And so much surprised that the first order was from the Prince Klaus Fund, the Dutch royal family. To get the opportunity also to meet Princess Beatrix, and she welcomed me, and she hoped for me a good life in her country. I continue in, I continued enjoying the, the cooking in the kitchen for so many people, so many events, so many companies. And last year, I had a nice invitation from the Prime Minister of Holland, Mark Rutte, who signed my book and who said to me, the economy of Holland getting better or growing fast with people like you, that's make me very happy. 2018 April, I published my first cookbook, my series of cooking, or my Syrian kitchen. It's about 65 Syrian recipes in Dutch, I try to bring my Syrian culture on the Dutch table with a lot of stories. Behind each recipe, there is a nice story about the Syrian kitchen, about the culture, and about personal uh, stories. Also, in September 2018, the Den Haag Museum chose me to represent the Arabic culture as a Syrian chef, and it was a big honor for me. Our meal is done. Now, I invited you to pray for me to meet my parents after seven years' separation. Thank you. <laughs>